Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our global press conference streamed live here from the Shard in London. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us today. You've travelled far and even given up your weekends to join us here. Thank you. I'd like to say a big, big hello to those of you at our media events right, happening right now in India, Australia, Germany, and for those of you who've woke up super early in New York and San Francisco, well, I really hope you got some seriously strong coffee. So I'm Claire Doyle, head of Raspberry Pi for Element 14, and I'm joined here today by my colleague Richard Curtin, Director of Strategic Alliances here. And many of you know him already, Evan Upton, CEO of the Raspberry Pi Trading. Well, we've got some exciting news to share with you. And it just so happens today is Pi's fourth birthday. We thought it would be a really good day for us all to get together, no matter what time of the day. So let me share with you the running order for this morning. We're going to be talking to you a little bit about the journey of Pi and reflecting on where our Pi business is today. But we've also got several, not one, but several pieces of exciting news. Today is the fourth birthday of this groundbreaking, amazing product. And we thought throughout today, this week, and hopefully, hopefully for the rest of this year, you can join us across the globe to help us celebrate this truly brilliant device. After the presentation, we're going to have a live Q&A. If you're watching on the live stream, please, please take part. We'd totally love to hear from you. And you can email your questions to us at media at element14.com. So, let's take a look at the incredible journey this tiny credit card sized computer has taken us on. From the very first board launched in 2012 to the Pi 2, which was actually launched in this very room, slightly smaller, we've had to expand it, just over a year ago, the impact Raspberry Pi has had on the world continues to amaze us and surpass all of our expectations. Through friendships, challenges, and we've certainly had quite a few. And a true desire and sheer determination to make this product and take it to market, putting it in the hands of millions of people around the world. Element 14 and the Raspberry Pi trading teams, all of which are in the room with us today, together have created a global phenomenon. Pi computers are simply everywhere you turn in a whole array of different segments, from education to professional markets and in, in, in industrial applications. Where our own Pi customization service launched just a few months ago has now come into its own. Element 14 has made more than 5 million of these credit card sized computers in various different shapes and forms distributing them to customers in over 113 countries around the world. We've grown a world-class Pi ecosystem to help customers use their Pis in simply the way that they want to use them. And as our accessory portfolio has grown, engineers, students, enthusiasts, and yes, even an astronaut has taken it into space and used them to build even bigger and better projects. Richard will give you some details on this later on in the presentation. But this morning, I want to give a big shout out to our half a million community members who share knowledge every day, who post exciting projects and give input endlessly, making the pie truly come alive. Please continue sharing your brilliant ideas. All of this makes Raspberry Pi the world's leading single board computer. And Element 14 is the number one Pi manufacturer and distributor. So it's fair to say that the last four years have been even crazier than ever. So on that note, he doesn't take much of a um, intro introduction, but I'd like to hand over to my dear friend and also the CEO of Pi Trading, Eben Upton to share with you some really big news. Thank you, Eben. 
Ah, oh, uh, thanks, thanks, Claire. So, um, yeah, um, exactly four years ago, uh, we launched Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi One Model B. Uh, not the not the best decision in the world to launch a product on the 29th of February. It kind of undermines your ability to have uh, uh, nice birthday parties. We're going to have a hell of a birthday party tonight. So, um, yeah, it's been as Claire said, it's been a, been a wild ride. Um, we've uh, we, I mean, I think a product that we thought in our wildest dreams might sell 10,000 units has gone on to sell 8 million. Um, I think we're seeing some evidence. Of course, you've got to remember why we're doing this. We're doing this because we're trying to rekindle that level of interest in computing that we had back in the night when I, we had when I was a kid back in the 1980s. I I think we're starting to see some evidence. In addition to getting eight million out into the wild, we're seeing some evidence that several million of those are actually going into the hands of kids, and that we are starting to make some progress with, with Raspberry Pi's mission. So yeah, um, four years old, eight million units in the wild. Um, we thought it would be fun to do something to celebrate. Um, so we got a new product, um, Raspberry Pi three. Um, Thirty. Ooh, ta-da! <laughs> there we are. It's Raspberry Pi three, eerily familiar-looking piece of hardware. Uh, I'm gonna, as it comes past, I'm gonna. Going to point point out the very small number of, uh, of visible changes on the board. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is um, eerily reminiscent of a Raspberry Pi B plus or a Raspberry Pi uh, Raspberry Pi two. What we've been able to do, we've been able to increase the amount of processing performance on the device, uh, and we've been able to add integrated connectivity. So as it goes past, you can see on the back here a little silver thing there. That's a Wi-Fi chip. And on the front there, on the far right, that's that's our Wi-Fi antenna. So we've gone from a 900 megahertz quad core. 32-bit Cortex A7 to a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core 64-bit Cortex A53. So we're posting about a 50 to 60 percent uh, increase in delivered performance versus Raspberry Pi 2. That's roughly a tenfold increase in delivered performance over Raspberry Pi 1. So in 13 months, you know, 13 months ago today, we were shipping uh, Raspberry Pi 1. Now we're shipping a thing which is 10 times faster. Uh, we still have our gigabyte of RAM. And we now have integrated 802.11n wireless LAN and integrated Bluetooth 4. Um, both of those are great for our uh, PC-like um, uh, use case. Uh, they're both, obviously, you know, you can talk to the internet, you can talk to your Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. Um, what's really exciting for us, though, about this is the Bluetooth in particular, and in particular the Bluetooth 4, the Bluetooth low energy support on the device, is going to position Raspberry Pi to do really well as an Internet of Things hub. Um, in the future. Um, and we've been able to do all of this while sticking to the same price. Um, uh, Raspberry Pi, you know, that $35 um, uh, price point for the, uh, the high-end for the flagship Raspberry Pi is really important. We've been able to squeeze all this into $35. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's what we've got. Um, we've got some wonderful, um, uh, afterwards we've got some, got some fantastic demos in the demo room that we uh, encourage you to take a look at. Uh, in particular, we've got the uh, um, uh, the Windows 10 IoT uh, Insider Preview Edition. Uh, that's actually available today through our Noobs Installer uh, platform. We've got that running out there. And I think we have some, uh, many of you will be aware, we have a modulized, uh, the, the flow from prototyping something on a Raspberry Pi to producing a product based around a Raspberry Pi is very important to us. Obviously, Claire mentioned the customization flow. I've left it over there on the table, haven't I? Uh, here we go, you see. I knew I'd do something wrong. Um, the, uh, the customization flow is obviously a very important part of that, allowing people to produce customized variants of the Raspberry Pi once they get to a certain volume point. The other, uh, the other um, element of that um, kind of industrialization flow is this. Uh, we've obviously, this is the uh, Compute Module 3. We've been shipping the Compute Module 1, the System 1 module version of Raspberry Pi 1 for a couple of years now. Uh, and today, although we're not launch launching it today, we're starting to talk about Compute Module 3, which is going to be the way that you take um, uh, products that you've prototyped on Raspberry Pi 3 to scale. So thank you very much for coming out. We'll take some questions in a bit. Um, Raspberry Pi 3, thank you. Thanks, Evan. That's a great warm-up. Exciting stuff. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Richard Curtis our technology partner strategy here at Element 14. So the Pi 3's arrived, uh, it's faster, more powerful, and it's packed with onboard IoT connectivity. And I'm sure many of you in the room and on our Google Hangout are thinking what this means for our current Pi ecosystem, our customization strategy, and most importantly, our customers. As Claire touched upon earlier, Element 14 and the team at Raspberry Pi Trading have led the development of a diverse technology ecosystem around Pi. Many of you may already know that Element 14 manufacture official Pi accessories such as the Pi camera, uh, the Sense Hat, and the recently launched 7-inch touchscreen Pi display. 
And we've also collaborated with leading technology partners to help us bring new products to market, from exciting new startups like Pyface and uh, Bitscope DSO and the new Bitscope Blade you'll be able to see today, through to global giants such as Microsoft and IBM. And we're leveraging our in-house design teams to create Element 14 exclusive accessories to meet our customer needs. This portfolio of accessories enables users to maximize the potential of their Pi. Uh, Pi devices, bringing creative ideas and projects to life. Our Raspberry Pi product range caters for a range of customers, ensuring that they can all get easy access to essential products such as SD cards and cables, as well as the unique technology developed by Element 14 and the Pi trading team. <clears throat> so I want to share a little more information about several new products and solutions that are designed to help our customers get the most out of Pi 3 and are certainly getting the teams at Element 14 excited. The new Wi-Fi connectivity on the Pi 3 brings wireless internet to IoT applications. PiFace, which you'll see in the demo room, connects to the physical things in IoT through easy to wire terminals. Pi users are then able to control motors, fans, lights, plus detect the status of switches and sensors. PiFace is perfect for prototyping and its robustness and reliability have resulted in it being designed in as a component for a wide range of, of products. Our new IoT starter kit created with IBM and Enotion provide a cost effective and flexible gateway kit with Pi3 for developers in the software and the hardware space looking to develop solutions for intelligent buildings such as offices, airports and hospitals. This solution leverages IBM's Bluemix Cloud and the Watson IoT platform. It's very exciting. And I'm personally very excited about the new Bitscope Blade that enables scalable IoT and cloud solutions leveraging that connectivity on the new Pi 3. So Pi 3 has the same form factor as the previous Pi 2 and B plus models with identical 40 pin GPIO layout. To support today's launch of Pi 3, we're adding to the ecosystem with a unique 2.5 amp Raspberry Pi power supply, which basically means that you can now power the Pi and add-on boards from one power source, maximizing the benefits of Pi 3's improved power management capabilities. And there's also a new Pi case and a new 16 gigabyte Noobs micro SD card. So how do we think the Raspberry Pi Model B will change things? We expect that many customers who already have a Raspberry Pi will want to get their hands on the Pi 3 to benefit from the new functionality provided by the Broadcom 2837, a quad-core processor offering an increase 1.2 gigahertz and of course the onboard wireless capabilities. We're convinced that this new functionality paired with the same form factor and the same attractive price point will make Pi 3 the most successful Raspberry Pi single board computer to date. I want to just turn our attention for a few minutes to customization. At the end of October last year, many of you uh, joined us as we launched the Global Customization Program, which is an exclusive partnership with Raspberry Pi and Element 14. This program allows customers to supported by Element 14's unique capabilities in design and manufacturing. Since launch, we've had a really positive response to this service. It's proved incredibly popular. And as we, as we continue with this program, we expect it to go from strength to strength. We've been evaluating customers' needs and providing bespoke, customised Pi designs to meet specific requirements. 80% of customization consultations have related to IoT applications, be they gateways or industrial controls or home sensing and lighting solutions. We see a massive potential for Pi3 in this market. So we'll continue to develop our ecosystem, watch this space. And on that note, I'm going to pass back to Claire. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. So, in addition to the new board and the new accessories Richard has just spoken about, we can also announce something else today. And as Eben touched on, that is the Microsoft Windows IoT Core will work on the new Raspberry Pi 3. 
Joining us today are the Microsoft Windows IoT team. You've flown in from around the world. A big, big welcome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> the team will be showing us just what can be done when you combine Windows 10 IoT Core with the Pi 3. We'd like to give you a little sneak preview of that right now. We're going to show a short video. Now let's see how Windows can put a head to any headless device. Here we have a wheel connected to a Raspberry Pi 3 running Windows 10 IoT Core. The wheel represents a common situation in robotics, when you need to know exactly how fast a robot's going or how far it's traveling. Here I have a display connected to the Raspberry Pi 3. You can see the speed of the wheel, the speed I've chosen, and the power output to the motor. But real-world systems deal with real-world problems, like friction. Let me offer some frictional force. We see exactly what we expect. The speed of the wheel slows down, but the power output to the motor stays the same. Let's do another take where I apply the bar again, this time with the closed-loop control setting on. You'll see that the Raspberry Pi increases power output to the motor to maintain a relatively stable RPM. With Windows 10 IoT Core and the Raspberry Pi 3, you can now build these types of high-speed, closed-loop feedback control systems. That was just a little snippet, as we have, as I said, the whole Microsoft IoT team here. They are in the demo room later on, so for those who are lucky enough to be with us here in London, um, please um, go and talk to the Microsoft IoT team and have a look at that demo in a little bit more detail. So, the launch of the Raspberry Pi 3 today completes a totally brilliant, fantastic portfolio of boards. Pi 3, Pi 2, A+, and as you just heard from Eben and Richard, the exciting new compute modules here as well. We have solutions to meet every customer need. Raspberry Pi has become a global phenomenon. And before we move to the Q&A, let's take a look at some of our very best bits over the last four years.
quite a journey. Amazing pie trading team, amazing Element 14 teams, bringing that together, thank you. So, there's absolutely nothing more for me to say other than let's move to our live Q&A. So, at, at this particular point, I'd just like to open for questions. As a reminder for those watching online, please email media at element14.com with your questions. Holly Smart, here with us in London, is our global head of communications and will be managing the questions both here and online. She's been waving at me, showing me that there's a lot of questions online. Thank you. Um, we have some microphones for the people in the room. Please, if you are asking a question, please state which um, publication or company you're from. Um, for those um, joining us on the live web feed, please um, state your organization or your name if you're sending through a question. It's really helpful for us. So there's nothing else for me to say other than to um, pass to the live Q&A and um, hand over to Holly here in London. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, the questions are certainly coming through thick and fast. We've got one um, from John in Sydney, Australia. Um, and I think I'm going to pass this one to Richard, but let's see. So the new Pi has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Will you be bringing out new accessories or peripherals to take advantage of these features? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for the question. Uh, great question to start with. Um, yeah, of course. I think the biggest uh, customer demand that we've seen over the last 12 months at least is connectivity around the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I think now what Eben and the team have done by bringing this on board is going to create a whole range of accessories. So I've talked about a couple uh, this morning in my presentation, as you heard. I, I think specifically what we're going to see happen is there's going to be new partnerships like what we have with Microsoft, like what we have with, uh, with IBM, so that we can scale up, provide cloud services directly onto the board. I also think we're going to see really interesting new devices, like I talked about the, 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 the Bitscope Blade. And th this is going to continue. So I think the short answer is yes. Um, we are still work in progress in many of those. Obviously, today is the launch. We have some that we'll show the people here in London today in the demo room. And uh, yes, watch this space on Element 14. Lots coming down the pipe. I'm going to give you another one from the web because New York are awake. We have a question from New York. <laughs> okay. from the coffee um, he's asking, um, the display has only just been launched recently. Is it in stock? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so um, the display the display has been unbelievably popular. You can imagine the display, the way that we put that together with Raspberry Pi, it, it is a fantastic accessory. And we didn't expect demand to be quite so uh, 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 strong as it was. So the short answer to that one again is, yes, we're in stock. Please come to Element 14. We have them now, and we're hoping to keep a very nice stable <laughs> stock position uh, as we move through this launch period. Okay, now let's just pass over to the floor here in charge. Has anyone got any questions? I do have a long list online. Ah, here we go. Yeah, Eben mentioned that uh, the new Pi is 10 times uh, as fast as the first iteration. Can you just unpack that a little, particularly maybe separating out GPU and CPU elements in that? Okay, so that's primarily a, that's primarily a CPU number, so that's a multi-threaded CPU benchmark number. I um, mean, it's hard to stick a single scalar number on these things. Um, the, th that's, the, that's the performance increment you'll see over from a Pi 1 to a Pi 3 in generic code, which is able to take advantage of the four CPUs. We are delivering a small GPU performance increment on this. There was no GPU performance increment from Pi 1 to Pi 2. We are delivering a small GPU performance increment. So we've, we've pushed the 3D up about 20% and the other elements of the multimedia are up about 60% versus Pi 1 and Pi 2. Can I remind you just to let you, us know who you are before you ask your question? Is there any more in the room? You're just stunned by the <laughs> for you. Yeah. That's good. I've got more online. Let's go to one of those. So um, I have a question. Sorry. I have a question maybe for Evan, mm -hmm. I think, this one. So will there be a Raspberry Pi version 3.1459? <laughs> Don't think we weren't tempted. <laughs> uh, yeah, the temptation to the temptation to go for a go for an irrational number for our for our model, and also to launch on obviously Pi Day. Uh, the other there are two obvious days that we could launch this product on. One is now, one is in two weeks' time. But uh, we, we we couldn't wait, and we couldn't justify the the amount of ink it would take to spell the product name out. For all sales. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and one from Bangalore. So how can partners work with you on accessories for the Pi? 
ask? Ooh, that's, that's a, a yeah, that's a really good question. So um, yeah, so obviously um, we are open uh, to working with lots of different partners as we do today. Um, I think um, if there are people out there who've got great ideas, uh, whether they be big or small, relating to Raspberry Pi, uh, then I would encourage you to, to get in direct contact with myself, then we can work with my team, and we would be very happy to have a conversation. We, we are really motivated by working with some of our Kickstarter and, uh, and startup partners. Uh, some of those ideas that they come up with are absolutely superb and go on to be some of the most popular uh, products that we launch around Raspberry Pi. So I would encourage uh, anybody out there with great ideas to get in touch and uh, let's see if we can help. Yeah, Tim Anderson from the Register. Um, very interested in the in the numbers of um, congratulations on fantastic numbers of, of pies out there since your launch. Do you have any breakdown for us on how those are used, say, uh, hobbyist versus business applications um, versus yeah. education? I mean, it, it can be it, it it can be it can be hard to tell, right? You know, uh, particularly one of the developments with the pies, we've seen the development of quite a rich reseller ecosystem. So it can kind of be hard for us to instrument exactly how where these things go when they come out. And come they come out at the end. Um, to the best of our knowledge, it's, it's a remarkably even split between hobbyist, which obviously was the original core market, hobbyist, industrial, and education. So we reckon we've got about, uh, in terms of current run rate, probably hobbyist is a little heavier in, the, in, in, in terms of total shipments. So you could say we have maybe three to four million um, uh, in the hobbyist, well, out of eight million, three to four million in hobbyist, uh, and then the balance kind of split fairly evenly between uh, industrial and education. And as we launch this new one, we expect all three, four segments to grow, but also through the Pi customization service, we expect the industrial piece to um, really accelerate through this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, John Barrett from uh, Electronic Sourcing Magazine. Um, regards to customization, uh, interesting to know what the batch size um, being quoted on. Uh, for customization. Also, what would you imagine would be time to market from idea to um, on sale? And what percentage of those that are coming to you to ask for customization are actually going forward to real projects? Thanks, John. Uh, great question. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me let me have a go at answering those. I, I think when we launched uh, the customization um, service, not that long ago, I remember questions in the room very similar to that, and we couldn't we couldn't say anything because it's brand new. We had no history. We are starting to build up our knowledge of what customer requ customers require when they come for Raspberry Pi customization. What I can tell you is that, um, with regards to batch size, it's a hugely broad spectrum of what we're looking at right now. But it, it stems from around five thousand units as the size that we're looking at in our pipeline today, right through to 50,000 units uh, on some of the more scalable uh, uh, projects. Time to market, well we launched it, uh, how many months ago was it Claire? We launched it four months ago. <clears throat> so the, a good way to show you this is that we launched it four months ago and we're just now bringing the first projects into a, a productized, marketable position. So I think four months Upwards is probably a good answer to your question. And then <clears throat> with regards to, um, um, sorry, John, your last part of your question was? Uh, percentage of ideas that would ultimately go to. Yeah, yeah, I probably can't answer that um, credibly right now because we're just moving into execution on those that are, are the closest. Um, but um, I would say what we're seeing right now, we're very happy with. The pipeline, just to give you some indication, has around 300 <laughs> opportunities in today uh, of various forms, and we're very comfortable with the conversion that we're seeing at this stage in the programme. Thank you. Uh, Mick Elliott from uh, Electronic Specify. Um, just a couple of questions in, in a way. First of all, the original concept is education. So is the original Raspberry Pi still out there? Kids still need to be educated on computers. Can they still get at it? And secondly, given your already uh, pretty remarkable sales figures and looking going forward, are you going to have to uh, invest in manufacturing and expand your manufacturing facilities for the Raspberry Pi as well? Um, I'll, I'll give the headlines and hand yeah, over to you, yeah? Okay. Um, Evan will talk around the education piece, but um, I guess if you're looking at our sales perspective, um, right now we have 
a number of different um, manufacturing partners in order to flex our um, capability and keep up with customer demand. Element 14 is the leader in Raspberry Pi and um, we work with a number of different partners to ensure that we, not only just on the boards themselves but also on the accessories, stay in the best stock position possible, flexing with the customer demand that we're seeing. So Evan, do you want to make some comments around the education piece? Yeah, I think you know, the education uh, the education side of Raspberry Pi is still its the heart of what we do. Uh, as I guess many of you in the room know, we are an educational charity. Uh, you know, we're not a for-profit organisation. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's very easy. I think it could be easy for us to get carried away in selling these things into industrial applications and to adult hobbyists. Um, the most gratifying thing for me uh, is that we are seeing these go into the hands of children one way or another, whether it's via schools, whether it's parents, whether it's many children buying them for themselves with their own pocket money. Uh, we are seeing them go into the hands of children. We are seeing children find Raspberry Pi exciting and find it a, a, a useful path into computing. Um, some of the, the, the things referred to in the in the lovely video there, um, the, the you know, one of the things that made us, um, well, the reason we got into this was people weren't applying to study computer science at university, right? We're seeing at the universities that we're able to that we're able to get some instrumentation on. We're seeing that start to recover. We're not the only organisation that can claim some credit for that, but we do believe that Raspberry Pi has been partly responsible. Have we got any more in the room? We've got them down here. Hi, Ben Everard, Linux Voice. Um, I noticed that you're calling this the Raspberry Pi Model 3. Are you dropping the A and B split? So we're calling it the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. So, um, yeah, so, so it's interesting. Yeah, the, the, obviously we talked a little bit about Compute Module 3. Um, you know, we, we're happy to start talking about that. The other, there are kind of two missing in action products in our roadmap, the Compute Module 2 and the, the Raspberry Pi 2 Model A. Um, what happened to those products? Raspberry Pi 3 came in nice and quickly and kind of closed the window. By the time we had selling so many two were getting pulled into 2B. Uh, by the time we had enough pipeline to build those other products, we were two, only two or three months away from the 3 launch. Um, we're expecting 3 to be, a, to be around for a little longer than 2 was. Uh, and so A, we're expecting this thing to exist. B, we are expecting that there should be a, an A. A slightly confusing use of language, but uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a question. Hi, uh, Mike McGlade from Microchip. Uh, silly question, but if I wanted one, can I have one to spot it on Hot UK Deals this morning? What is my, my lad do? <laughs> do you have stock? Mike, don't worry. You can leave this building with one in your hands. But um, for well, those of you not with us in London, you can go on the Element 14 uh, website okay. and, and purchase them. They are available for sale yeah. today. We expect massive global demand, yeah. um, as we usually do. So um, please take a look at element14.com and you can go online and order one. Or go to some of our amazing partners that we've got on the channel. Some of them, again, here with us today. Some of our reseller partners and um, go to one of our reseller partners and purchase one. They are, yes, it's available. They are being built at a, at a higher rate than any yeah. new product yes. has ever been, any, any yeah. new Raspberry Pi product has ever been made. So we're, we're pretty confident that even, <coughs> even if people miss out today, they'll be able to you know, get in there in the next week or two. Hi, Steve McCaskill from Tech Week Europe. Um, what difference will integrated connectivity make for IoT ad ad adoption? Um, obviously, you probably do it before. Yeah. And why has it not been done until now? Is it a cost issue? Um, so I think it's a cost and capability issue. Um, building a device which has an integrated radio is an order of magnitude more uh, complicated from, an from a design point of view and also from a conformance testing point of view. So it's only really in the last um, uh, 12, 12 to 18 months that Raspberry Pi has grown that set of capabilities, has got the right mix of engineers in-house to get that job done. Um, the, there is a cost. There is a cost aspect. Obviously, you know, we th there wasn't room in the Pi two bill of materials for for, for Wi Fi. There is room in the Pi three bill of materials. Uh, and in terms of what difference it's going to make, um, we think that there's a there's a real future Raspberry Pi as that kind of IoT hub, uh, as the device that sits there, possibly connect, either connected via Wi Fi or via wired Ethernet to your to your home network, uh, and then bridges out to a cloud of low cost um, uh, BLE Bluetooth low energy sensors. <coughs> Uh, kind of distributed throughout your house. I'm just going to go back to the web for one because um, we've got lots more questions. So this is from New Zealand. Um, 
Does the Android have a future on the Raspberry Pi? Steps being made to support hobbyists to develop viable Android builds for the Raspberry Pi. Yes. Um, so, um, <laughs> there we are. I've done that. Um, <laughs> leave now. Um, no, my, um, uh, yeah, so historically, um, the, uh, the structure of the multimedia integration on the device hasn't really supported. It's been good for delivering multimedia under, under Linux and uh, Raspberry and operating system, but it hasn't been something that's easy for the community to build on top of. One of the things that's changed over the last six months, uh, we now have an open graphics driver stack developed by Eric Anholt in, uh, in the US. Uh, we have an open graphics driver stack, which we're currently shipping as a public beta. Um, there's been a lot of work done by the community both to port Android and Chrome OS. Uh, to run on top of uh, on top of that integration, that's kind of an exciting thing. I'm hoping we'll get. It's unlikely we're going to invest significantly in it, but I'm hoping that we uh, that we'll be able to ship a community developed Android and Chrome OS. Now, I think we have time for one very quick question from the room, and then we may have to close Q and A. Yeah. Hi, uh, Thomas McPherson Pope from uh, Pyface and Codebug. Um, so, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi offer great uh, opportunities for kids to make. You know, really connected projects. Is there educational resources in the pipeline to that make use of these? There will be educational resources in the pipeline. One of the wonderful things that happened this this past year, we've really ramped up our production of educational resources within the foundation. Uh, there are, I said, obviously. Found the foundation team have had their hands on Raspberry Pi threes for a, quite a period of time now. Um, they. Um, uh, th there will be resources imminently uh, that start to show people how to use both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to build kind of more interesting stuff. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm passing back to Claire now. Thank you, Claire. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We've got loads of questions coming in online, um, so we will answer all those questions. The people in the room, um, th I know there's still more questions to answer. We have um, demos. We are, we're available for press uh, interviews um, as we go um, and leave the live stream. So at this stage, I'd just like to say goodbye to everyone on that live stream. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our press releases, images, graphics, all those amazing videos you've just seen from today are available on the press page um, or please contact media at element14.com.